I'll, I'll put it the most favorable argument is that you were afraid of a panther hit and that you were uh -huh. also afraid of the extent to which the uh, FBI and police forces had infiltrated mm -hmm. us. And the argument goes that you became paranoid and that you were searching for the mole, for the snitches, and you began to have members tortured. And amongst the members that you tortured were mm -hmm. a couple of women. Mm -hmm. Now, that allegation continues to circulate. How do you respond to that allegation? The way I've always, I'm not guilty of the state's charges. I've always maintained my innocence. I'm a victim and a survivor of the Cointel Pro, right? And if you read the history of the trial, and Halisi, um, <clears throat> Imam Halisi has an article on a black uh, leader in captivity from the, right. uh, during the, uh, um, in the Black Scholar, you could read this, you know? And well, well, uh, you know I'd have read it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so we talk to the audience. Yeah, yeah and I yeah, appreciate yeah, your, yeah. your knowing that. <clears throat> yeah. And the charges made against me were first made against somebody else. But the woman that was finally uh, given immunity uh, had a case against her. And see, well, it's hard for me to say these things because first thing people, oh, you're blaming the victim. No, wait a minute. There's no victim here. And this person, this person actually, uh, people say it's two people, but actually uh, I was found guilty by the state of one person. And it was for uh, false imprisonment and uh, force. Uh, uh, uh. So the reality is that I'm sacrificed. And the history of this is that it's a rare brother and a sister in an early organization was not approached by the police to set me up. Yeah. And so they wanted to. This was in San Diego as well. We, we, we on our, In our organization history, we have those uh, people talking about that. And the charge again was assault with uh, force and false imprisonment. And they had four years out of my life. And they told me, look, if you confess, you can get out early. Because it was an indeterminate sentence from six months to 10 years, right? That's the California. Re re repeat that. Repeat that. It was six months to 12 years, right? Uh, 10 years, six months to 10, 10 years. years. Okay. They said to me, they came to me several times, if you confess, right, and say you, you can get out earlier. I said, I'm not. I'm not. You can keep me alone. The only reason I got out early, you know, and they did everything to me. I need to tell about my political prisoner because people don't even know. I was in the hole, put in the hole for um, uh, a whole year. I didn't have any mm. uh, light, I, sunlight and all that. That was gone. I had a hole in the floor for a toilet, right, a dirty, filthy a piece of cloth for a mattress and then they drugged me and then assaulted me beat beat you know battered me in in yeah. there and, and i i suffered a lot then i developed uh, uh something in there and they kept saying that it's just in my mind my my house Tim Moyo, brought a doctor in and saved my life you should see me i look like gandhi right i'm in there just on the on, on the cusp of dying and they wouldn't then they wouldn't let me read material, right? My house wrote me, when I say my house, that's Tim Moyer, my wife, my yeah. companion in all things good, beautiful, and sacred. I, those of you who know me know her. But you know, yeah. she used to have to type up my books and articles in her love letters, starting out with love and writing about three, four pages, because you wrote long letters. Mm -hmm. And then she would put the rest of an article I would need or a chapter from a book or something like mm -hmm. that. So that was, it was not easy for me.